You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Welcome back to the Cricket Podcast, where today we have a special guest joining the show. Um, we've got one of the hundreds of future stars. She's captain of Welkfire and one of the most prolific run scorers in domestic cricket, Sophie Luff. Welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Always well, an absolute pleasure. Yeah, uh, obviously the 100, it's, it's England's shiny new franchise tournament. It's a new format. There's eight teams representing different parts of the country, uh, starting this Wednesday, isn't it, at, at the Oval. Um, Sophie, are you excited to play in the new format and, you know, ultimately to be part of the game's history? Yeah, I mean, look, it's um, it's super exciting to be involved as a player. I think it's been a long time in the waiting, hasn't it? Um, you know, we've almost waited, you know, two years for this competition. Um, the sun's shining as well. Um, even here in Cardiff, the sun's out. Um, it's been really hot. Hopefully the weather stays like that for the whole competition. Um, but look, it's going to be great for the game in, in general. It's going to be great for the women's game, being on the same platform as, as the guys and hopefully a massive success um, at the end of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, speaking of that platform, I think one of the things that we're most excited about is seeing uh, a, a lot more domestic women's cricket. And from your point of view of as, you know, sort of one of the, the really strong players uh, at that level, do you think this could potentially be a format or, or a platform that could uh, ex- give you the exposure that might help you push on for an international cap, for example? I think competitions like this are always an opportunity to... I guess, put your name out there and um, look in, in the short format of the game. I genuinely believe that it only takes maybe a couple of innings to put something in people's minds. Um, so look, it's it's going to be fast paced and it's going to be action packed. And look, um, if I can perform and, um, you know, get some runs and contribute to Welsh Fire and hopefully um, make sure that we're we're winning the tournament and being as successful as possible. Ultimately, that's, that's my job. I'm selected as a batter um, and I need to be putting in those performances. But look, it's a new format for everyone. It's just a great opportunity opportunity for me to go out there and, and express myself and, and maybe show a few people that um, I have developed my game over the last couple of years. So with it being a with it being a new format, um, I are you know do you know what to kind of expect? Have you played any friendlies? Have you had any team meetings to talk tactics? Kind of um, could you shed some light on what a good score you think would be? <laughs> Uh, look, we're going in at the deep end. I certainly am. Um, I haven't been exposed to the game at all. Um, not played any sort of warm-up games yet. Uh, we're actually off to the Aegeus today um, to play Brave and a couple of friendlies tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be could be exciting, could be absolute carnage. Um, we'll see how those games unfold. Um, but tomorrow is all about learning for us. Um, there's not many of us um, in the side that have played the format before. Um, so it's going to be sort of, uh, yeah, see what happens and then hopefully take some really good learnings into our first game on Saturday. Sure. So as the captain here, um, I guess a lot of the responsibility is going to fall on you. Uh, you're going to have to leave from the front. What, what, what's your approach going to be? Are you going to, are you going to treat it like a T20 maybe? Or are you going to try and get people to be a bit more aggressive with their batting? Yeah, look, I see it as a, a T20 um, with just 20 less balls, to be honest, um, <laughs> and try and keep the game as, as simple as possible. Um, look, I think you probably could overcomplicate it and, um, you know, try and try and be really tactically smart. Yeah, I'm sure as the competition progresses, um, we'll, we'll learn things and we will try different things as we go along. We've, we've got a few ideas at the minute, but um, I guess it's just on the day and, um, yeah, just trying to, trying to run with it. Um, look, we're under a lot of time pressure. It, it's going to be very fast paced, so it's going to be um going with your gut I think going with your instinct and just trusting that that belief that you've got that that's the right decision and then you know ultimately trusting trusting the girls you're throwing the ball to trusting that you've got the field in the right place and um yeah I guess just um yeah hoping for the best so so can we expect you to to be using the same bowler for 10 balls in a row from from the the get-go or uh are you going to play it a little bit safer uh, from that front and, uh, and treat it exactly like a t20 uh, it's an interesting one. Um, I think opportunities may present themselves where you might be looking to use a bowler for 10 balls. Um, I won't give too much away as to, you know, whether it's <laughs> that um, tactic. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other teams are think, thinking along the same lines. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure many of the seam bowlers would uh, would be too happy running into 10 balls. <laughs> Um, so it might, it might be a spinner's job, um, but look, I think it's just in that moment, um, if you want to keep them on, then you keep them going. Um, but yeah, 
a lot of chopping and changing. I think that's what we've seen in T20, isn't it? That, you know, these days that there's so many one over spells um, and bowlers have to just be ready to, to come on, bowl their over, get off, come back in the middle, come back at the death. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not really a bowler's game, but they're probably asked to do a lot more of the work than <laughs> the batters these days. Well, I've, I've definitely bowled a 10 over, bef- 10 ball over before, but that, that was probably against the rules. Um, so uh, not, not so well, uh, not so well placed on that one. Uh, aside from the tactical aspects of the game, um, a lot of talk about the 100 is focused on the impact it will have on the women's game, raising its profile, um, injecting it with some pretty serious momentum at a domestic level after the delay because of the pandemic, etc. Um, it must be pretty exciting to be part of that, right? Is it, do you think it's going to have a really positive impact on the game? Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, yeah, people are, are crying out for sport at the minute as well. And I guess yeah, the pandemic has had a massive effect on the women's game. And hopefully, this puts us um, you know in the shop window, um, you know, on a on a level playing field with with the guys in terms of the platform that we're going to be exposed to double headers. Um, you know, hopefully, we can attract some some great crowds. Um, you know, I think we're a little bit limited over in Cardiff still. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that, that sort of eases and, and we can get some capacity crowds in because, you know, ultimately as, as players, we want to be playing in, in front of as many people as possible. We want to be inspiring as many young boys, young girls, you know, older men and women to take up, take up the game um, and love the game. And hopefully the 100 um, can really do that. So as someone who, who's sort of involved in the coaching side of the game as well, uh, is it starting to create a positive buzz already among younger people or, or do you think that'll be something that builds through the, the tournament? I think it, I think it will build um, and hopefully it builds, you know, not just this year, but um, in the coming years as well. I mean, look, if, if you're into cricket already, um, you want to be going along to your closest game to watch the best players in the world. That's what's so good about this tournament is that it is the best players in the world playing against each other um, in the UK. Um, and like every game is going to be televised as well. So if you can't get to a game, then you can still hopefully um, access them and, and watch them at home. Um, but yeah, it's just super exciting that there's opportunities for young boys and girls to get involved in the game and, and hopefully um, you know, build a, an association with, with one of the teams around the country. You saw the buzz after um, Shrubshole uh, got the, kind of a wicket in the World Cup and how much buzz that created and how you see people with kind of the England shirts on there. So I can definitely see it making a huge impact. Or even, um, you know, like Shafali Verma in the, in, the, in the recent T20 series. I mean, like it's, it's all, all that catch from, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Harleen... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah 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 the, the it's uh, the, those clips are, you know um people demonstrating how good they are uh i i, I think exactly what will inspire people so I, i'm really looking forward to it from that front ross back to you <laughs> uh have you had the chance to meet up with any of your teammates yet or has it all been kind of virtual team bonding um we've read that gary kirsten is taking the the men's welsh fireside um up a mountain and on a couple of stadium tours kind of sounds like a bit of a rubbish stag do but Anything you anything you guys are going to be doing? Uh, we um, we actually did some circus tricks the other day, um, <laughs> which was quite interesting. Yeah, so we did a little bit of juggling, uh, Diablo, uh, plate spinning. Um, so that was quite a, a fun afternoon. Uh, COVID obviously has restricted a lot of the stuff that um, we we would usually do in terms of t- team building. And mm. uh, there was a rumor that we were going to be um, sheep herding up in the Brecon Beacons. Um, <laughs> But apparently that got canned because uh, the farmer was actually too busy shearing. Um, so he didn't have time to accommodate us, which was, um, yeah, slightly disappoint- disappointing. I- I've got a bit of a farming background as well. So um, that would have been quite good fun. Yeah. Who, who was the best at circus tricks? I mean, obviously you- you'd have won the-, the sheep shearing contest or the sheep herding contest. But uh, who-, who-, who was the top circus performer? Uh, there's quite a lot of girls that could, um, could juggle quite well, actually. Um, I was absolutely woeful, so um, I won't be commenting on my performance. But, just um, caught everyone. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is how I do it. I'm just trained. It's ingrained in me. Uh, Georgia Hennessy on uh, the Diablo was incredible. Um, yeah, I, I got it on my in- in- Instagram story. Um, unbelievable skills. Oh, love Great. It. Uh, yeah, so I mean, speaking of sort of some of the other players that that um, you'll be coming up against, uh, there's there's been a few dropouts, unfortunately, from uh, the the Welsh Fire team, which which is sort of an inevitable impact of of having to hold the competition during a pandemic. Um, who who are you most looking forward to playing with, and is there anyone that you'd 
you know, highlight as one to watch out for maybe for our, for our listeners and viewers? Yes, we've got a number of, of young girls in our squad that um, I feel like, yeah, if they get the opportunity, then, um, you know, they can they can really show show what they can do. We've obviously got um, Alex Griffiths, who's um, 18, 19. Um, she's Welsh, um, so she's absolutely loving putting on a Welsh shirt um, and representing the fire. Um, she's going to have a lot of home support as well, so I hope she really embraces that opportunity and they get behind her and she can really have an impact. Um, you know, she's going to play quite a big role for us, I, I think, um, with both bat and ball um, as an all-rounder um, and she's one to watch in the field as well. So I'd probably um, pinpoint her as, as a youngster to watch within the, within the Welsh fire side. Um, but yeah, in terms of um, the girls that I'm looking forward to playing with, obviously we've got Sarah Taylor behind the stumps. Um, yeah, I, I haven't played um, much, if any, cricket with Sarah. Um, so to have her experience, to be able to draw on, um, you know, all those years of her playing cricket at international level. And she's, she's going to have a wealth of knowledge of, about the other players in, in the other teams that we're coming up against. And um, just her being able to sort of um, shepherd the team from behind the stumps, I think that's going to be a vital cog um, for us. Maybe she'd be good at the uh, sheep shearing then. She'd be absolutely fine on that front. Uh, is there any, any part where... Um, so I think in the first game of the T20, like Ricky Ponting said that it was really difficult to get kind of up for that game. From speaking to you, it sounds like you're, you're buzzing for this. It, it sounds like this is going to be... It's not, a, it's not a joke of a tournament or anything like that. It's a, it's a new format. It's a new exciting format, a massive opportunity. So it, it must be... Well, it must be really exciting. I mean, I, I get excited <laughs> to play Sunday cricket and that's, that's how sad my life is. <laughs> That wasn't even a question. That was just your no. reflection on your yeah. life. <laughs> after, after, yes, oh yeah, after yesterday's performance, I must admit, God, an existential crisis the other side of this Zoom call. <laughs> um, so in, in terms of a real question then, uh, I'll step in here and help you out, Ross. Uh, looking, looking at the sort of talent um, among the seven other teams, who are you, I don't know, if you're looking forward to playing against them or, or, or most worried of, uh, about playing against, which players stand out in the rest of the tournament as, uh, as, the, as the stars? Yeah, I guess if you look at, at Southern Brave, they've obviously got, um, you know, two world-class openers in, in Wyatt and um, Mandana. Um, so they're going to be, they're going to be tough. Um, but look, I think if you look at any of the sides, um, they've got, you know, jam-packed top orders. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to have to be looking at wickets early in the power play to, um, you know, expose their middle and, and lower orders as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, look, um, we're just excited for the challenge of, of playing against those players. You know, that's what that's what you want as like a domestic player for me coming into this competition. You know, I'm challenging myself against some of the best players in the world and, and hopefully the rest of the girls in my position um, see that opportunity as well. Um, so I guess I'm not sure we have got many more questions, but the the, the last one, the million dollar question, if you like, is uh, how, how do you think Welsh Fire are going to get on in this tournament? Um, uh, in your mind, are you one of the favourites? You think you can you can take this one down? Um, I don't think we're one of the favourites, um, but I think we might you know slip under the radar and, and surprise a few teams. Um, I don't think we've got. Um, necessarily the firepower that um, other teams might have um, and hopefully we can sort of find a way to to maybe win win sort of like I don't know grittily and just get in the battle and um, yeah surprise a few teams um, with the way that we do go about things you know we've got a, we've got a long batting order um, so we, we we sort of back ourselves there um, and yeah look, let's see what happens it, it's a shorter format again and I, I genuinely believe it's it's on your day it only takes one person to to fire um, no pun intended, um, but yeah, like hopefully, um, you know, we get off to a good start in the in the competition on Saturday, and we can take that momentum forward. Um, yeah. Have you got a team song? <laughs> we haven't yet, actually. It's been discussed this week. I mean, there's plenty of songs um, with fire in, and um, yeah, the yeah. Welsh are on fire. Your bowlers are terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll throw that one into the mix and come back from the girls. But yeah, we've not on one yet. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that suggestion, Ross. <laughs> well, Sophie, uh, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed speaking to you and best of luck for the tournament. Um, and to all the people watching, um, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube page and uh, enjoy the 100. Follow us at The Cricket Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Sophie, best of luck. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers, Sophie.